Okay. Why don't I call to order the 69th meeting of the National Advisory Council for Human Genome Research. Thank you all for coming. It's great to see you all again. I'll turn this over to Rudy for a few business items. Right. So uh, good morning, everyone. Let me remind you that the uh, open session of the council meeting is being uh, videocast live and uh, will be archived. And uh, before we get into our regular business, I'm going to turn the floor back to Eric. He has some words for our parting council members. Right. So this is, uh, this is a bittersweet council meeting every September because it means we are uh, bidding farewell um, to a number of our council members who have, have served their full time, shall we say. So in some ways it's sort of parole month, if you will. Um, <laughs> they've, uh, they, we let them out on work release now, but uh, they have uh, They've done their duty, if you will. They've done their service to the Institute, to the NIH, and in some ways to the nation. So um, we like to always acknowledge our outgoing council members, with those being this is their last um, council meeting. I, I would like to probably make a couple other remarks about this group in particular, um, uh, because there is, there is a certain novelty associated with this cohort of council members. Um, First thing to say is that uh, they've, they've served the Institute at what, and, and the NIH at what truly has been a profoundly difficult time. Um, uh, on the one hand, uh, they are here to help us uh, develop our plan for genomics, which probably is the hottest of the hottest in terms of biomedical research. But uh, you're doing it at a time where um, I think many acknowledge is one of the worst budgetary circumstances uh, the biomedical research has seen, at least in recent years. Um, uh, with the sequester just being the last of a series of uh, declining budgets, um, where things are just profoundly painful. And uh, that has made it r incredibly important uh, to have wise uh, advisors telling us um, what their thoughts are as how uh, if we try to navigate this very difficult circumstance. You know, I'd also point out at the same time that was happening, uh, the council had to deal with uh, uh, a newbie institute director. Because I think, uh, I, I don't know precisely, I, it was either shortly after, you, you, I, I, I don't know, you're already on council, maybe you guys could remind me, if you were on council when I became director or do you become on council immediately after, became, after I became director? I can't exactly remember which. Right after I became director. So, but, but I was a rookie then and still a newbie, um, having just had the job since December of 2009. Um, so you had to break me in in many ways. Um, but, but it also gave us an opportunity. And um, we've talked about this uh, in many venues and will continue to, is I think even the way we've conducted these council meetings and even the way we've engaged council has changed substantially uh, over the last uh, three to four years in a very constructive way. Um, and it's not to say that previously there wasn't constructive interaction with the council. I just think it's a different era, a different era with respect to my leadership of the institute and the style with which um, um, I'm, I'm leading the institute. But also you saw a major reorganization of the institute take place and a lot of leadership transitions. And every one of those things came in consultation with you, um, especially the group that are, are graduating here today. Um, so. I think the way we run council meetings, I think the way we engage council um, has, has really substantially improved over the term of, 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 of those of you who are departing. And it's a credit to many of you that uh, we've really listened to your advice um, and, um, and I think have, have, have done a lot of things that has made the value of these council meetings even greater. So as a group, I thank you. And, and, and I will also say, and I already know it's true, is that the council members that are on that are not at the end of their term, I think very much are also contributing in that spirit. They see very much that we are very receptive to how to engage council and how best to sort of navigate these difficult times, um, but also exciting times scientifically. And so I think you've also set a good, um, a good example that has really, I think, made this a, a terrific group to interact with. So um, we, we pay you so much money for your service that I'm sure we don't need to do anything more than just say thank you. But uh, because we don't pay you so much for your service, uh, we like to do a little bit of additional um, uh, expression of our gratitude. And so, um, as is now the custom, uh, we have uh, departing gifts. Uh, you want to pull one out, Rudy, just so they can see? For those who don't know this, this is designed by the Institute's graphics artist. Uh, now, just flip it open. Um, Daryl Lasia. Um, who uh, makes these beautiful glass, uh, design these beautiful glass, uh, it sort of looks like the Washington Monument, but it has the double helix right in there. And uh, it's also engraved with your name and, um, and your time of service. So 
I'm going to ask Rudy to go around and give, and I think you even get a piece of paper on top of that. Yes. Yes, you get, yes, right. I think so. So with that, let me, uh, and I'm going to ask Rudy to go around the table and give it to our one, two, three, four, five departing members, starting with Ross Hardison, who is probably one of the most congenial people you ever work with, whether he's a grantee or an advisor, um, his guidance on all of our... really is very insightful advice he's given us over the years about data production and functional genomics projects. Um, our quintessential biologist and geneticist is David Kingsley, who never loses sight of the big picture. I think David has given us many good ideas um, over his term on the council. So thank you, David. A long-standing member and leader of the ELSI research community, Pamela Sankar, has provided excellent leadership and insights about um, LC research projects and genomics and society portfolio. She's also been sort of the founding chair of our genomics and society working group of council. <laughs> David Williams has been instrumental and he's brought his knowledge and his perspective on minority health issues as well as his input on many ethical issues that we now must address as genomic technologies will be implemented. Thank you, David. Um, and last but not least, uh, a terrific St. Louisan and St. Louis baseball Cardinal fan, R Rick Wilson, brings the important perspective of large-scale sequencing centers really dealing with the front line of this rapid evolving genomics landscape and really helping us keep us thinking clearly about many of the technological innovations that we have to deal with, um, especially as we apply them on a large scale. So thank you, Rick, for your service. I was also told um, to remind you that just because we bid you farewell from this group, that we have this incredible ability of retaining phone numbers and email addresses, um, and that it would not be surprising if uh, groups like, oh, I don't know, the NHGRI Review Branch or others like that would welcome you ba back to help in with your peer review expertise uh, once you go off of uh, council's uh, role. So don't be surprised if you continue to hear from us in various ways. So again, thank you as a group. And that leads to some introductions that I think Rudy's going to give. All right. We have several new employees at NHGRI. Um, June and July are the months where we turn over a lot of program analysts, so there's several new ones that I want to introduce to the council. When I call your name, would you please uh, stand so the council members can identify you? Uh, Shannon Biello. Shannon uh, works on the Protein Capture Common Fund project and is part of Team Sequence, working predominantly on the large-scale uh, data sequen sequencing and analysis groups. Catherine Crawford. Catherine goes by Katie. And she works on the uh, Cancer Genome Atlas and uh, TCGA and the Clinical Sequencing Exploratory Research, or CSER, programs. Lay Finnegan. Lay works on uh, BD2K and the broader NHGRI informatics portfolio of grants. Brandon Floyd. Brandon is involved in all of the data access committees that NHGRI helps to manage, and he also participates in the population tracking activities that we report on to Council. Preetha Nandi. Preetha splits her time between the Encyclopedia of DNA Elements ENCODE and Clinically Relevant Variant Resource CRVR projects. Queen Nguyen. not with us this morning. Uh, Queen works on uh, all things related to H3 Africa. Uh, Jacqueline Odgis. Uh, Jacqueline works on uh, Emerge, Page, and the newborn sequencing uh, programs. And you can call her Jackie and live to tell. Uh, Mr. Shane Clark. Shane is a program specialist, works in the Division of Genomic Medicine, and is probably involved in more projects than I can enumerate this morning. Thank you, Shane. Uh, we have two new program assistants, both of whom work in the Division of uh, Genome Sciences, Amalia Sobalvaro, not here, uh, Bauhan No. You'll see them in another venue then. Okay, from the uh, Division of Policy, Communications, and Education, uh, Renate Abramson. 
Renette is a program analyst working in the policy and program analysis or PBA branch. Uh, Kate Saylor. Kate is a health policy analyst also working in PBAB. And Jonathan Bailey. Probably back there. Probably, Probably in the back room, right. Jonathan's a graphic artist, works in the communication and public liaison branch. Okay, uh, I'd like to welcome the uh, council liaisons. Uh, with us today, Joe McInerney from ASHG. Hi, Joe. Uh, Rhonda Schoenberg from the National Society of Genetic Counselors, Rhonda. And Judith Beckendorf from the American College of Medical Genetics and Genomics. Hi, Judith. We have uh, several visitors today at the council in person. Apparently, there's a tour bus from Ohio State University that came. Lori Lapiema, Zhao Liang, Rami Alovan, and uh, Lonnie Welch, all from Ohio State. Uh, there's a Sarah Beachy from the Institute of Medicine, and Rachel Levinson from Arizona State University is also joining us. We also have half of the incoming class. We bid adieu to several people this morning. You, you will have replacements. Um, and joining us today, uh, Shanita Hughes-Halbert. Shanita is professor and holds the AT&T Endowed Chair in the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences at the Hollings Cancer Center at the Medical University of South Carolina. And Dr. Dr. Martin Kreitman is professor in the Department of Ecology and Evolution at the University of Chicago. Uh, they will be joined in February by David Page from Whitehead and Eric Borwinkel at uh, UT uh, Health Science Center in uh, Houston. And the four of them will comprise the class of 2017 for the council. Uh, next on the agenda are the council minutes from the May council meeting. Uh, does anyone have any comments or questions about the May council min minutes? And if not, can I have a motion to approve them? Motion to approve. A second. second. All in favor? Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, on the open session agenda, I want to draw your attention to the future meetings of the council. If any of you have any, see any schedule conflicts, uh, please speak to me and probably more importantly, speak to Comfort Brown about that. Okay. Uh, Eric, I think I'll turn it back to you for the director's report then.